YouTube, welcome to the Emporium. My name is Michael. Today I'd like to talk about the newly introduced Canadian drone laws that came into effect in 2017. It has made a, a big difference to how I use my drone and I just want to talk about how that affects me and what my feelings are regarding that. So from the initial drone laws that are introduced, there has been an amendment and that has changed things slightly. So I'll read you the amended version and we'll compare and see what's different. So the drone law affects any machine from 250 grams to 350 kilograms. So that's quite a big drone. Uh, you can fly up to 90 meters above the ground or lower. Uh, you have to fly 30 meters away from vehicles, vessels, and the public. If your drone weighs more than 250 grams, but less than one kilo. So that is an amendment. At least 75 meters away from vehicles, vessels, and the public if your drone weighs between 1 kilo and 35 kilos. At least 5.5 kilometers from aerodromes, any airport, seaplane, base, or area where aircraft take off and land. At least 1.8 kilometers away from heliports or aerodromes used exclusively by helicopters outside of controlled or restricted airspace. At least 9 kilometers away from natural hazard or disasters away from areas where it could interfere with police or first responders, during the day and not in the clouds, within your sight at all times, within 500 meters of yourself or closer, only if clearly marked with your name, address and telephone number. And there's a fine uh, up to $3,000 if you don't comply with these new rules. So as I said, there has been a change in the rules and it affects smaller drones. So if you're under one kilo, life got a little bit easier for you, but I still think they're very restrictive. The changes that were made uh, for if your drone weighs between 250 grams and one kilo, you can go within 30 meters of a vehicle, vessel or public, down from 75 meters. And they reduced the aerodrome from nine kilometers down to 5.5. And they also reduced the aerodrome if it's just by helicopters to 1.8 kilometers as well. They also revised um, where they said previously just in the daytime, they specified it not in clouds. So if, uh, yeah, so a cloud comes along just suddenly, that's that. So why do I use a drone? I use them to add a little bit more to my YouTube videos. I think it makes it more interesting. I enjoy good drone footage and it's, it's a novel way of looking at the world. It's not something we all see, even though drones are becoming more and more common. So why did the Canadian government have to introduce these laws in the way they did? I think it was a complete overreaction to some very, a very small minority of people that did a few silly things. I don't think there's anything majorly happened. They've never brought down an aircraft. They've never killed anyone that I'm aware of. But there's many things that do that aren't as heavily regulated as, as a drone, for instance. I think you have to be responsible with anything that you have especially if it's flying around loose, but that could be a kite, it could be a balloon, it could be anything that could interfere with aerospace. So I think the initial legislation was very restrictive and I think they did that on purpose. And this is the cynic in me that the legislation was intended to go in as a shock tactic. I think they also planned an amendment early on in order to maybe soften it so that when people looked at the revised version, they were like, yeah, it could be worse, it could be like the first version. Whereas the second version is still just as restrictive. I think it goes well beyond what's, uh, what's actually required. So the question remains, should you buy a drone in Canada? Well, I think if you live and spend most of your time in built up areas and you li live near several aerodromes, I think it's gonna be very problematic for you. I'm not sure if I would invest in one because all it's going to do is either get you into trouble or you're going to have to travel long distances. For me, I tend to take my drone with me when I'm out in the back country. So there's no one there to, uh, to bother. I'm, I'm quite happy. But even under these <laughs> restrictions, you know, I, I can still fly above 90 meters if I um, made the mistake. So there's things that I still can't do out there and I, 
obviously can't go further than 500 meters, so that's kind of ridiculous. If you could make a drone that was less than 250 grams, I think you would have a winner on your hand as far as a Canadian populace is concerned, but I think they would probably just amend the, um, amend the legislation just as quickly. I do feel the legislation does need looking at again. I very much enjoy using my drone and I think it's become accessible, I think is the best word, for lots of people. They're still expensive, the Spark is much more acceptable and if I didn't have the Mavic, I would have possibly gone for the Spark. I think it, it does lots of great things. Uh, but I'm glad I have the Mavic. I'm looking forward to using it more in my videos and it gives me lots of pleasure to, to fly around and explore places I've never seen before and would never see and I can also get some wonderful footage as well that I can share with you on YouTube. So this video wasn't meant as any kind of rant. It was really just to give you an update that there were restrictions introduced and those restrictions has now been eased to some degree for smaller drones. It's something I've only learned recently and I want to share that with you. So if you found this video useful, give me a thumbs up. If you have any of the comments to add to this conversation, please leave them down below. I'll be very interested to actually read those. And until next time, Take care. And as always, thank you very much for watching. If you like my videos, leave me a comment, maybe a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe.